Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name's Lizzie and today I'm going to be telling you all about how I made rag bunting for my wedding. So we did a completely DIY wedding, we did pretty much everything ourselves and it saved us a whole load of money and it was also really hard work but a lot of fun. I got a huge amount of satisfaction out of making so much stuff for our wedding ourselves. So let me tell you, I'm going to put some pictures in because it's really hard to show you but and it also this has all been scrunched up in a bag so it's all looking a bit sad and crumpled compared to what it looked like on the day but basically we made a whole ton of rag bunting this is rag bunting it's different to um sort of flag bunting in that your traditional bunting would be triangles of fabric this is literally just strips strips of literally rags so you could make this out of scrap fabric anything um, and it's really quick and easy to make. So what you need is rope. So you can see here that we've used this nice thick sort of, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if this is gonna focus very well. This nice thick jute rug. I'm gonna link all of the materials in the description box below. Um, the rope was from Amazon and the rope cost £10.90 for 50 meters. What a bargain, 50 meters is loads. So that was really good. And then you need fabric. We, as you can see, chose fabric in yellow, fuchsia pink, red, some red in here somewhere, white, orange, yellow, or oh, repeated myself somewhere there. I'm going to put a picture in now to show you some um, ranunculus, which is my now favourite type of flower. We had some of these at our wedding. And this photo inspired our colour scheme, basically. We didn't choose a, on a colour scheme until really last minute because we just didn't know. At first we were just planning on white slash ivory with loads and loads of greenery, like loads of foliage. But at the last minute we thought, no, no, we need to add some colour. We don't want it to be bland because our wedding venue was just a big blank space. Um, that we needed to fill. So we went for all these really bright colours, the pink and the red, the orange, yellow and white. And I really love the effect. So you need fabric, rope, fabric and a pair of scissors. That's literally all you need. And a door handle comes in handy as well. Now in terms of the fabric, I bought this fabric from Ridley Road in, um, in East London. It's, um, at, if you get off the overground at Dalston Kingsland, there's a road called Ridley Road and at the weekends, or maybe every day, there's a market called Ridley Road Market. And I was aware of a stall that did poly cotton for one pound a metre. They're now not a stall anymore, they're an actual shop. Um, but if you walk down, you'll see it because it's there's not that many fabric places there. And they basically do poly cotton in all different colours for one pound a metre. Like one pound a metre, what a bargain. I can't remember exactly how much I bought in the end. I think I got two metres of each colour. So that's 10 metres in total. So I've got five different colours, two metres of fabric each. So that's 10 metres of fabric for one pound a metre, that's 10 pounds. So far, rope was a 10 pounds, rope was 10 pounds, fabric was 10 pounds. I spent 20 pounds basically and this got me I used all 50 meters of the rope and I ended up with about 40 meters worth of bunting because on each string you do you need to leave some spare rope at the end for tying it up so I ended up with we kind of roughly measured because we worked out where we wanted it to go so we measured that space added some extra to allow for drape and to allow for tying it off at the ends and we ended up with yeah three or four lengths of bunting in total it was about 40 meters worth of actual bunting with the strings on and yeah the rest was then for tying so what you need to do is literally get the end of your piece of rope I'm now sat here in a complete mess and tangle of bunting <laughs> um but yeah get the end of your rope and what we did actually Alex my now husband made all this I'm very lucky that he was so willing to get involved and help and do all this because this was all my brainchild but he was amazing enough to get stuck in and do some of the hard work. So what he did is he tied this to a door handle and then sort of draped the rope along, like balancing it on the backs of a few chairs and things. And you essentially need to cut strips of fabric. The strip, strips of fabric that we used are five centimeters wide and 65 centimeters long, but you can use whatever length and width of strips you like, depending on the effect you're after. So these strips, that's what these strips turned out like. As I said, they looked a little less crumpled on the day. Um, but these strips, five by 65, and as you can see, they're doubled over, so the length ends up being about half of the strips you actually cut. You don't actually even need 
to cut them. You can just, what I did is use a pair, what we did, he did, Alex did, is use a pair of fabric scissors, or any scissors will do, just to snip into the fabric and tear. So Alex literally snipped and tore, snipped and tore every five centimetres, and then he ended up with a huge bag full of strips of fabric. So then he got his rope, tied it to the door handle, <laughs> draped it across the backs of some chairs, and essentially tied the strips on in 10 centimetre increments. So that meant that you needed 10 strips of fabric to create one metre of bunting. I've seen people do rag bunting where they've got way more fabric and it's all bunched together much more closely and it looks fuller and bushier. So if you've got more fabric, you could do that. This is totally customizable. And to sh I'm not sure the name, is this a reef knot? I'm not sure, but I'm gonna show you how we tied it on. So if you've got your piece of string, fold your strip of fabric in half and hold it across your piece of string. Then you've created a loop at the top here. See that? You're basically going to fish the underneath bits and pull them through and pull it tight like that. So that's what your knot looks like. It's not going to focus, is it? Really simple. And basically just do that. Well, you can tie it on however you like. That's just how we decided to do it because then it, the knot makes both the strands point downward as opposed to sticking out in funny directions. So it's so simple. Alex literally plugged into Netflix and off he went, um, tied them on every 10 centimetres. And I think this bunting is just such a good way to add some colour, add some interest to an otherwise plain room. Um, and it's so much quicker to make than triangle bunting because there's no precision involved. It's supposed to look rough around the edges. That's why it's called rag bunting. Um, yeah, it's just so quick and easy. And look, I've ended up with this huge box full of it. I'm also a fan of rag bunting because I think it's a little less twee than triangle bunting. Triangle bunting to me is very sort of country fair, you know, village fate. Um, I imagine it in like ditzy prints and florals, which if that's the look you're going for, great. But that's not quite so much my style, the sort of twee, ditzy sort of look. So this is just a slightly different vibe and I think it works really, really well. Thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more. I've got other wedding DIYs up on my channel but I mostly usually do dressmaking videos. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Bye!